Hello, Buster0063 back for part 10 of Shovel Knight. Last time we just barely got through the Knight stage. <laughs> we also defeated Phantom Striker, the last of the Wandering Travellers. So before we do too much in this, uh, 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 on this part, let's uh, get another of the armours. I said I would do one, one, one per knight. So um, now we're going to get the Ornate Plate, which is flashy, acrobatic and useless. <laughs> it also costs the most, um, and we get a nice, or we go, we go gold. But yeah, effectively it is more or less useless. You get a slightly higher jump, and as you can see, with some jumps you kind of do a flip in the air as well. So uh, it really is acrobatic, it really is flashy, but by a similar token it more or less really is useless. <laughs> um, but before we go uh, tackle another knight, we can actually uh, do frigid flight, since we've got the propeller dagger. What dangerous cliffs. Plan to go further? <laughs> Better learn how to fly. <laughs> so, yes, the propeller dagger is clearly um, what we need here. It looks a little bit like the stage is kind of set up for an ice level, which is more, much more geared toward you know, the uh, layer of, po of Polar Knight's place. But, um, yeah, despite the somewhat mislead, it is indeed the um, propeller dagger that we get from the uh, propeller knight stage that we need uh, in order to, to get by this. Um, for the most part, you just need to use the propeller dagger, kind of, you know, over and over again. I guess we've also had the um, some uh, the, the little things from Spectre Knight stage, where you, where if you bounce on them, pogo them, or hit them, sorry, you can make them rise up a bit to get a bit of extra height. We also have the um, jellyfish enemies, which are saw from the propeller knight stage, um, and lots of other various annoying enemies like these uh, skeletons, which you don't want to get too kind of close to at this point. At uh, this uh, kind of, you know right by when you're dropping down there because if you take a hit you'll probably um, fall in the pit but uh, i mean they're not too too bad but uh yeah be on your guard <laughs> um little kind of platform puzzle there where you go pretty much all the way to the right and then all the way back to the left in order to get up to this chest uh there are i say only gems in there so it's not a music sheet or anything so not mandatory or well not even the music sheet would be mandatory but uh not a necessity even for you know complete it at 100 completion but uh, you might as well do it um there and then. Um, this screen, I would do this right at the beginning. So make the on the when you first get there, before the jet, as soon as the jellyfish has stopped being electrified for that kind of first time, go then. The timing works out well so that then you're not gonna it's not electrified when it's within range of the ladders that you need to grab. So uh, yeah, that would be my recommendation there. Um, we are pretty much approaching the end of the level. We've just got a, a kind of a huge pit and spike area, so. As might be expected, get as high as you can and mash the propeller dagger. Get a music sheet and a ton of money for our trouble. And that's another fun little kind of extra stage, along with the uh, Forest of Phasing and the uh, Knuckles Quarry to get through. And that is the last of them. Um, so before we go to the next night, I presumably obviously take the time to cash in a few music sheets. Five. Didn't know I was carrying around that many, so uh, that's uh, 2,500 gold for me. Not that I really need much more gold at this point in time. I've more or less bought everything. But, uh, I'm also going to stop by uh, the Magicist and get this last magic upgrade. So I'm now at full magic, up to 100, and just to um, prove the point, I talk to her again and she says, Oh, I don't have any more. So we're at full magic, we're yet to be at full health, we're still one um, pellet away from being at full health, but uh, we'll have, that will have to wait for another time. But still, 9, nine HP, or 18 if it's only half points, well, is more than enough at this point in time. So, that's the end of my kind of setup for this, uh, for this video, so yeah, let's go to the Clockwork Tower, Lair of Tinker Knight. And I really like this level. It's kind of, I don't know. It kind of feels like it kind of feels like it ha it's almost a necessity for have to kind of have to be in here. Kind of one a level with conveyor belts. You'll perhaps kind of think if, if you know if any of you know the kind of Mega Man ones, you tend to have kind of staples of certain levels. So you tend to have a, a water level. And obviously here we've got Treasure Knight. You tend to have one that's got kind of like pits all over the place, or a sky or a sky based level or something like that. We've got Propeller Knight. We've got one with kind of conveyor belts and you know lots of kind of uh, moving platforms and such like that which are trying to you know which is tinker knight so it kind of feels like it covers 
you know, the staples of what, certainly from a Mega Man point of view anyway, where you've got you know, different Robo Master types to go after, that we kind of cover much of the bases. Uh, I don't want to talk about it too much now, but Polar Knight, you'll probably appreciate already. We've got the kind of ice base level with the slippery, you know, uh, ice physics and whatnot. So yeah, it does, really does feel like it's covering all the kind of bases for, you know, what a, what a good Mega Man, I guess, uh, uh, kind of uh, game should have. All the kind of classic staples and gimmicks. So, this little bit, I've just kind of um, mucked around a bit to get to get these giant cogs out of the way, which you can't really do much about. There's quite a few of them that kind of um, spring out from the right-hand side, so you're going to kind of need to keep backtracking every now and again to get out of their way. Um, you can pogo on them, as I've just demonstrated. You, need, you can use it over here. I guess, again, you could use the phase locket or indeed the propeller dagger, but, um, yeah, pogoing on the cog is absolutely fine. Now we have a fishing spot here, so... Let's just make sure we do that. I can't help but actually briefly just feel that the slightly higher jump actually makes uh, a little bit of difference in Tinker Knight stage for, for some areas. Not quite sure why I feel that way, but I think it's just a little bit of a help um, than perhaps some of the armor, other armors would be. So, uh, yeah, probably a, I, I think it's actually quite a decent pick. Um, for this particular for this particular level much as the uh, momentum male armor was not from propeller knight um i don't want to hark too much back to that but you will have um, if you watched my previous video where i took on propeller knight i had a bit of a nightmare on that stage i don't want to blame the armor but having one where it's harder to stop and your momentum carries on you know more than it otherwise would was probably not the best idea for a sky based level with pits all over the place but anyway that was then, this is now. <laughs> this level goes by a lot nicer than Propeller Knights did. Um, you would have perhaps kind of noticed the um, staple for where a hidden uh, area might be. If you look down to the bottom right, there's that here. Um, given that I know that there was food in there, I kind of wanted to avoid it for the moment. I also knew there, there would be a hidden area over here with, well, I'm going back to the, that, that, level, uh, that screen before, so, or again, sorry. So, yeah, there's a music sheet here. Um, you can get this by either going down and then up. I personally find up and then down better, just because I think the clockwork mouse um, behaves a bit better if you can attack it from above, whereas trying to attack it from the side is a bit more, a bit more tricky. So I think the better option is to, is to go up and then down. Um, so yeah, there is, as I said, as I was saying, there was there is food in here, so I decided to clear off all the enemies before I go and collect it. So uh, yeah, that's why I didn't do it before. There are a lot of kind of areas, a bit like this, where you're maybe not quite so sure which way to go. So there are a lot of areas where there look like there are kind of two piles and whatnot, and we'll certainly see those a bit later. Um, you may have noticed that little that little kind of uh, icon was there on this on this on that wall. So uh, yeah, you revealed a hidden area. Not a fundamental one, admittedly. There was just a gem in there. It was a nice big shiny gem, but, but um, not nothing like a music sheet or anything like that. I hate the kind of position of the clockwork mice or mouse there and these. Uh, Medusa head analog <laughs> kind of things, or sort of flying saws and whatnot, which just kind of always in the way. But, the, you know, but uh, anyway, um, the top of the previous screen, break through the wall on the left-hand side, and we come to this little fun area. Um, it's a very long area, so um, so it's, yeah, it stretches out quite a way. But uh, we're going to get um, another kind of reasonably useful item for certain circumstances. I. It's again not one I would tend to use all that much because it, um, here we are, the mobile gear, ride over hazards and reach higher places. Um, it's probably really only, it's probably, its main use is for platforming, I guess, rather than combat. So since I, I'm pretty kind of confident in my own ability with platforming, I don't tend to use it all that much. It does have some very, very, very good uses. Um, Say so you can use it to get a little bit extra height to places, and um, it has another wonderful use, which we'll see a bit later. Not this part, unfortunately, but. Um, here we can see it kind of in use as well, and that kind of definitely throws you the first time you see it. You're not quite sure what it's going to do. The first time I got that uh, that item, I saw the pit. I thought, well, what's going to happen here? So I jumped, and I jumped off the mobile gear, and then it, it, it jumped and moved to the right, and I fell in the pit. So I wasn't quite sure how it worked. But yeah, when it comes to a, a pit, it kind of hops over it, which is really nice, but uh, it looks really cool <laughs> when, you, when you can kind of pull it off. But when you don't know that it's going to do that, um, it's, uh, it kind of catches you out probably the first time, the first time you do it, because you're kind of like, oh, I need to jump and, and, and just, you know, avoid falling in the pit, but no, the mobile gear does the work for you. 
Um, this screen, you notice I use phase locket there to get by that. The timing sometimes on getting up from the platforms um, and with those annoying saws that kind of float by is really freaking annoying. So again, I just decided not only will the phase locket help me get through the saw and me not have to worry about it, but it also gives me a little bit extra, extra hanging time in the air so that the platforming timing just works out just that little bit nicer. Uh, we've got these kind of um, spinning platforms where you kind of drop down a little bit, but if you continually hop, you'll you'll you know you'll gain you'll gain height and you'll get to the top of the area. Um, here we have a little section. There's loads of ways I bet you could do this, probably with a combination of the phase locket and the mobile gear or Pella dagger. But I figure, well, we collected the mobile gear in this in this level. You know, it's probably what was intended to be used. So you know, let's just do that. I was also just very slightly afraid that if I'd used Propeller Dagger, for instance, I might have jumped too high onto the spikes on the ceiling. So, yeah, the safest thing, at least for me, I thought there, was to just use the mobile gear. And as you can see here, if you just stay on the platform long enough, you'll drop down through, and that's what you have to do on that last little bit to get to the uh, to the to the right hand edge. That screen is one of the ones, by the way, where it's a little bit unclear which direction you want to go in, <laughs> um, right or up. Um, if it's left or up, you tend to, or something like that, or left, left and right, it's most of the time it's reasonably obvious that you should be going right but um for you know uh oh, sorry left for us for a kind of a secret and right would be the correct way to go but something like up and right is always a bit mm, not quite sure um anyway i've started talking way over to this section which is a um scrolling screen with the platform that you kind of need to make sure you keep standing on there's clearly spikes on the floor that we're going to need to keep up with um, you also don't want to get crushed in the earlier sections when um, by the wall or, or, or the, the jutting out bits of the platform at the top of the screen. You can get crushed if you're not careful, so um, do be quick at the beginning. And this knight decided it would just plonk around in a really annoying place right above the blooming uh, the wall there, so I kind of like couldn't quite shovel on top of its head without <sighs> going too far to the left or on top of the wall. So yeah, it decided it was just going to hide in one of the worst places it could possibly imagine. And took quite a bit of damage for him, which I was not pleased about. Uh, these enemies, we saw them earlier, they just kind of shoot out uh, little cogs um, or metal blades. There's a nice little callback if you prefer that. Um, and they just they run around on the or roll around on the floor. Um, and uh, yeah, you just need to avoid them. There being two there, you take that section with a little bit kind of uh, extra caution, but uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's still not too bad. Uh, again, two options, up and left, and uh, since left is a little bit harder to get to, I decided, well, that's definitely the way I wanted to go, but I thought I would show off up the ladder just to see when, when the paths when the, when the what, where, when the paths branch up <laughs> on me or meet again, um, you know, uh, well, in fact, you know, that, that, that indeed was where they were going to meet up, Blair, that mouthful, that mouthful, wow, that, that sentence was a mouthful, indeed, so was that, Blair. Anyway, yeah, left was the harder area to get to, so naturally you think it's probably going to hold some kind of item or something, and indeed it does. So we get this area with a fishing spot with a goldfish, yay, uh, and the section where cogs drop down from the ceiling. It's They always drop at the same, each of the three drop at the same time, and they all drop at the same speed, so provided you get the timing of when they're going to when they're going to drop, then you'll have no problem whatsoever. And frankly, even if you did have a problem with the timing, if you decide to make a a dash for it, you know, immediately after they've got out of your way, then that'll be absolutely fine. This section reminds me a little bit of Crash Man stage, with the uh, platform kind of running around on the track, and you have to wait for it to be low enough down in order to get the requisite height. And uh, yeah, here's where the uh, piles meet up, and I decided not to bother with that enemy there, because it's really freaking annoying. Um, particularly with the up and down, um, the little, little, little kind of platforms that are kind of, you know, bobbing up and down makes that thing very, very annoying to kill, particularly since it can shield not only from the side but also from above as well. So in a tight space that thing is kind of annoying. Here we have another auto-scroller, this time going up. So yes, you need to be quick here. Don't hang around, don't get caught off screen. It is in effect the same as a pit, so yeah, if you don't keep up with the pace of the screen uh, and keep on screen, then yeah, you will die. So just make sure that you yeah, keep up with things, really. Um, it's not that difficult, frankly. Um, the beginning bit is potentially where you might screw up if you're going to, just with the, uh, the, the swords which could knock you off the ladder and just kind of make you, um, you know, 
stay at the bottom quite, uh, right, uh, quite a bit at the beginning. You'll notice there that the, you kind of start up at the bottom and things scrolls up. So just, you know, it's been very quick at the bottom, but once you've kind of got past the, the first bit out of the ladder, it's really not too bad. Um, and there was a little kind of a handle there, which we whack, brings down a staircase, and we're at the boss. Take a night. Aw. Ah, did you make all that noise? I can't think straight. I have so much work to do. Just work on letting me pass, little friend. Oh, big words, Tin Man. I'll show you a thing or two. Okay, I love this guy. <laughs> he trips over, and all he does is throw these little spanners, wrenches um, around. It, I, I couldn't quite believe it when I first saw this. Admittedly, you think, okay, this can't be it. There has to be something else. And indeed, yeah. Well, it's not much of a spoiler because we're going to be seeing it in about 20 seconds time or whatever. But yeah, there is another part to this fight. But come on, this is adorable. When he trips up as well. I'm being a bit kind of cautious here, holding back, not attacking as much as I could do. Because I was still trying to go for... There is a feat for no damage here. So I was kind of felt, I'm still on for that at the moment. And then I mess up. So now I just go kind of gung-ho and I think, okay, now I really can't care. But I really don't care about taking my time. But uh, yeah, this is literally all he does. He just kind of runs around in a bit of a frenzy from side to side. Occasionally jumping, occasionally tripping over, throwing spanners, wrenches around. And it, yeah, it's just adorable. <laughs> but yes, that clearly is not the entire fight. When you beat his first form, well, admittedly, he probably only has one form, but uh, when you defeat him, the ground gives way and, uh, well, it looks, it looks suspiciously like the Egg Dragoon <laughs> from, from the Sonic series. So, yeah, he's now um, in this giant mech. Uh, he shoots out uh, rocket missile kind of things. He also shoots out these rocket punch things at the top, at the top of the screen. Uh, and where you want to be is obviously pogoing on his head. Now, I make a huge mess of this, not once, but twice, I believe, where I kind of fall off because I kind of mis, um, miscalculated or just completely messed up, frankly. Um, where him kind of, once he knocked into the wall, how far he was going to um, you know, shoot back to the right. But um, there's a little bit of a timing thing at the top here, trying to hit him, make sure you don't get hit by these kind of a rocket punch kind of things. But um, yeah, oh, I didn't mess up for a second time. Okay, that must be uh, that must be some other some other um, time. But uh, yeah, the way you want to hit him, where you want to whack him is on his head, and you need to get you need to make use of the either the rockets or the little kind of um, red and blue flashing ball type things that he shoots out. Um, after you've hit him, or after he's after the first phase of him is done, you can bounce off those to get up to up to the uh, um, the little spike, I guess, sticking out from his, the front of his mech. And again, that works the very same way as the, some of the platforms we saw on the level. So uh, you need to just hop up, and you'll gradually kind of get the the height you need. But yeah, really do like that. Really do like that fight. Actually, it's uh, very very entertaining. Works it off the left hand side of the screen this time. Why not? Another lock breaks apart, and we're down to one night remaining. But before this video ends, let's just do a little bit of a clean-up again. Um, let's go and get the last armour. Uh, and I deliberately saved this one for last, because it's awesome. The Dynamo Mail. Perform two consecutive shovel drops to unleash a powerful charge slash. It is easily, I think, the best armour in the game. It's super, super useful. It's going to be super, super useful as well. For Poe Knight in particular, so um, this is the uh, armor that I'm going to stay, or I'm going to keep on me for the rest of the game. So uh, hence, deliberately, why I left it for last. Also, a little bit why I left Poe Knight for last, because this armor is going to be super useful for taking down Poe Knight a little bit easier. But yeah, that's the end of this video. So um, yeah, I will see you next time, part 11. We'll take out the last Order of No Quarter Knight, Poe Knight. Cheerio.